In this chapter, we're going to explore how to make your MIDI performances more realistic using several advanced features in Cubase. In this chapter, we'll show you note expression for your MIDI performance, the Haley and Sonic SE virtual instrument to get the most out of note expression, how to add articulations to your MIDI performance, and useful ways to employ the group edit function to manage several parts more efficiently how to use the hit point system, and use of the enhanced quantizing features with audio. Steinberg has introduced a revolution in MIDI editing with note expression, and it will radically change how we think about and work with MIDI notes. Now to fully understand this, let's take a closer look at how MIDI works. We already learned that basic MIDI data contains note on and note off commands so that electronic instruments can be triggered remotely. Back in the 80s, this allowed performers to play one keyboard, called a controller, and then have many other keyboards fire simultaneously. Soon, the MIDI protocol was expanded to include other data besides note on and note off. This other data included things like sustain pedals, pitch bend, or modulation control. All of this other data is collectively known as controller commands. As computers, keyboards, and MIDI standards became more sophisticated, the controller commands became more complex and today include touch sensitivity, aftertouch, and even breath control, all aimed at making electronic music more expressive and realistic. But the MIDI standard sends data out along channels. This means if you're playing a four-note chord through a string sound and wish to add modulation, you had to modulate all four notes. In a real ensemble, it's unlikely that all four players would use the exact same vibrato at the same time. You couldn't reach inside the chord and send controller information to just one note, because MIDI notes work on channels. Another limitation of the MIDI standard and its assigned channel-based design becomes obvious when editing. Here's an example of a MIDI performance with several associated lanes of controller data. The notes are shown here, but down below we see multiple channels of controller information. This can make accurate editing very difficult because you have to edit both the note lanes and the controller lanes. Steinberg's new note expression protocol removes both of these limitations. The first thing it does is present all of the controller information with the note data, visually associating the two. Let's look at that same MIDI passage and its controller data again, but now using the note expression system. You can select a group of notes and have instant visual access to all the controller parameters. And if you edit this group of notes, the controller information will be edited at the same time. So you can cut, copy, and paste without losing the feel of the performance. But even more remarkable is the way note expression lets you apply controller information to individual notes, not just channels. That's right, you can now reach inside a MIDI chord and apply controller data to some notes and not others. Here's how pitch bend was forced to work before note expression. But listen to how we can use note expression to pitch bend just one of those notes. Amazing. You can record note expression data in real time, as an overdub, or even draw it in. The operations manual covers all of these items in a step by step fashion. You'll also see new tabs for note expression and an expression map in the updated key editor. Here, you'll also have the ability to map the dynamics of your performance to the articulations in the score editor. If you create a new controller lane for articulations and dynamics in the key editor, you can use dynamics mapping to control what articulation symbols appear automatically in the score. Conversely, 
As you change articulations in the score, you'll hear those changes in the dynamics of your MIDI performance. In order to apply controller information on the note level as we've just seen, you have to use a note expression compatible instrument. Fortunately, Steinberg included just such an instrument with Cubase 7, the Halion Sonic SE. Halion Sonic SE is a smaller version of Steinberg's flagship workstation, Halion Sonic. Halion Sonic SE is capable of interpreting note expression data right out of the box. If a patch is set up to work with note expression commands, it's indicated by the extension like this patch which we used in the previous example. Halion Sonic is a true workstation, and you can open up its editor to load up numerous sounds and play them back in combination, or use them as separate sound modules for multi-track performances. Many of its sounds and sonic textures are ported directly from Yamaha's award-winning motif line of keyboard workstations. Halion Sonic SE is also loaded with numerous innovative performance controllers and devices, such as the Sphere and Trigger Pads. Let's take a quick tour. And that's only scratching the surface. Another feature in Cubase 7 is the Group Edit feature for folder tracks. This provides you with a quick way to apply one edit to multiple tracks at the same time. To use the Group Edit option, create a folder track, then place all the tracks you wish to edit inside the folder. To make this easier, you can use the new command, Selected Tracks to Folder, to help set up your edit group quickly. Then, Enable the Group Edit button, and any edits you make will be applied to all the tracks in that folder. Some other enhancements include a smart grid in the main project window that automatically scales to the selected quantize value, and the nudge feature, which works with the new smart grid to move the cursor by one increment of the current quantize value. You can now export all of your data on your notepads to a text file. and the Delete key will no longer delete tracks. Previously, it was very easy to accidentally delete a track by pressing the Delete key too many times, or by pressing it by mistake. The default settings in Cubase 7 require you to use the menu item Remove Selected Track to avoid accidental deletions. Other features include more logical layout and naming of record modes in the transport panel, And the Preferences dialog now lets you configure the track arming behavior for MIDI tracks and audio tracks separately. Hit point detection in Cubase 7 has been improved as well. If you're new to Cubase, hit points are used for detecting the tempo of a recording and then slicing it or warping it to change the tempo. In early versions of Cubase, Hit points were calculated for the entire waveform based on time. This system worked well, but often created too many hit points, and it aligned them with the beginning of the sound. The current system is much more musical. Detection is now based on the volume, and hit points are placed at more musical locations, such as the note onset instead of the transient. This is a small change that makes a big difference, because Cubase now hears the beat like you and I do. To calculate hit points, open the sample editor, open the appropriate tab in the inspector, 
and you'll notice that the sensitivity slider has been replaced with a threshold slider. The threshold slider is used to select hit points, but it works off of volume and you can see a visual guide on the editor. This makes it easy to filter out crosstalk and noise signals that have no relevance to this track. The operations manual covers how to edit, move and delete hit points in detail. Cubase 7 also provides the options to create MIDI notes. This is a great feature if you want to use a live drum performance to trigger sampled drum sounds, a technique known as drum replacement. You could also use these MIDI notes to simply augment your live drum sounds with additional samples or sonic textures. Once you've added hit points to a piece of audio, you can slice it and apply quantization or automatic timing adjustment. The quantize tools in Cubase 7 are much more streamlined than earlier versions. They're all condensed into one quantize panel, instead of placed on separate drop-down menus. You can drag and drop MIDI data to the panel to create a groove preset, and most of the MIDI quantize functions can now be used with audio. This is because Audio Quantize now provides audio clips with start, end, and length information just like a MIDI note has. There's even a catch range which allows you to quantize some beats and not others. Now let's get started on a new chapter and take a look at audio warping, vary audio, and more.